Hi everybody. Hey. Well, we're coming to you today on a more serious issue. Um, as it has been brought to your guys' attention, um, our YouTube channel has been made public and made aware to our family mm -hmm. and friends and everyone that we basically knew that was a Jehovah's Witness. So um, after that happened, it's been what, two and a half weeks or so since mm -hmm. that happened? Two weeks? Three weeks, something Three weeks. like that. Okay, so after that happened, um, in the meantime, Robin has had the opportunity to speak with her parents. Mm -hmm. um, and me, uh, I have not been able to speak with my parents. Um, so basically, we've been in contact uh, contacted by one of the elders from our previous Kingdom Hall mm -hmm. and he asked to get together with us or specifically with me to meet with me and um, this video is in response to his requisition um, you know Robin and I have been away from that organization for so many years now um, we haven't identified ourselves as a Jehovah's Witness for nearly a decade. Um, so we found it interesting that because of the light of certain recent events that the brothers from the congregation wanted to get in touch with us. Um, but you know what? We're not going to do that. Um, as we have freed ourselves from that organization, we have also freed ourselves from the belief systems that it holds, and we have freed ourselves from the oppression that it presses down on people. Um, having said that, we no longer recognize the authority of this organization. Um, and because we are not Jehovah's Witnesses, I see no need to meet with you. Um, so, as we know what will happen, the brothers will do what they need to do mm -hmm. and regardless of what we say what's gonna happen is gonna happen yeah. so that's basically it um, we don't feel a need to meet with the brothers um, I wanted to kinda we wanted to kinda do this in a video format specifically because we've heard so many stories of other people who have had bad experiences with meeting with the brothers, being made to feel ashamed, uh, asked very personal questions, and we just want you to know that you have rights as a human being, not just rights as a Jehovah's Witness, you have rights as a human being that other human beings do not have the right to impose upon. So if someone asks you questions that make you feel uncomfortable, you don't have to answer them. If someone wants you to come meet with them to talk about something that they feel you've done wrong and you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. Um, stand up for yourself and know that you are a person worthy of dignity and worthy of respect and worthy of being treated kindly uh, and loved. Mm -hmm. And if you do not want to put yourself in a situation that you have to answer to a group of men that may not treat you with those qualities, then you under no obligation to go. Um, we really have only ourselves to answer to in this life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's important that we treat other people well, but it's also important that we understand our rights and treat ourselves well. So, having said that, uh, Robin and I have prepared a statement that we are now going to read. Right. Robin? Okay. For the past 10 years, we have not been active Jehovah's Witnesses, nor have we identified ourselves as such. During this time, we have come to learn many disturbing things about the organization. As we have done more research, we have come to learn about the many false doctrines being taught by Jehovah's Witnesses, as well as the many gross wrongdoings that have been and are still being covered up by the, con the organization. 
They are so numerous that we don't have the time to go into all of them here. However, we'd like to point out just a few. False prophecies. It is a historical fact that the organization has purposely tried to distance themselves from, cover up, and literally deny the fact that they have made false prophecies throughout their history as an organization. Not only have they denied they made false predictions, but when these predictions that they made failed to come true and members were disappointed, they subsequently blamed the followers for misinterpreting the Watchtower's own words. They blamed the members for being too eager for the end to come and mistakenly believing that the end would come by a certain date. Many of these individuals sold their homes, went into financial ruin, put off having children, gave up furthering their education because the Watchtower organization convinced them that the end was imminent. The Watchtower convinced them that they would never use the skills that they would learn in pursuing higher education and that it was a waste of time. This caused them also to believe that they would never have to pay back their loans, leading many to take out second mortgages on their homes, rack up credit card debt, as well as other personal loans in order to spend the remaining time in this system as unpaid full-time pioneers in service to the organization. The Watchtower has taken no responsibility for the countless lives they have ruined due to these false predictions. Included with these false prophecies would be the lie pertaining to the fall of Jerusalem in 607 BCE which is the beginning point for how they calculate the 2,520 years based on Daniel's prophecy of seven times. This leads them to the year 1914, a primary doctrine of their religion, as they continue to publicize that this was the year Jesus began his invisible heavenly rule over the earth. Now another prophecy that they have made has failed to come true. The end did not come during the lifetime of the generation of 1914. So now they claim to have new light on this doctrine. Now they have a new and improved explanation of what Jesus meant by the word generation. He must have meant overlapping generations because we all know that when God told his prophets what he was going to do, he was never clear about what his words actually meant. Blood transfusion. Your stance on blood transfusions is also unscriptural and has led to the deaths of untold thousands of people, including children. In recent years, you are allowing your members to accept blood fractions. Where does one obtain blood fractions? Only from donated whole blood. This is the epitome of hypocrisy within your religion. Blind guides who strain out the gnat, yet gulp down the camel. God doesn't require human sacrifice to, in order to worship him. He requires mercy, not sacrifice. Human life is sacred, and every instance where a human life was on the line, Jesus showed mercy. He didn't demand sacrifice of human life. Association with the United Nations this fact was a complete shock to us. After decades of Watchtower publications rebuking the United Nations as being the wild beast of Revelation. They were touted as working in harmony with Satan, that they would turn on all religion and finally set their sights on Jehovah's Witnesses, thus ushering in the Great Tribulation. What an astonishment to learn that you the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses held a membership with that wild beast as a non-governmental organization or NGO for 10 years. Then to learn that after you were exposed by a British newspaper for this, you lied about your reason for membership, something that you continue to do. As an NGO, a non-governmental organization, the principal purpose of this association is redissemination of information in order to increase public understanding of the principles, activities, and achievements of the United Nations and its agencies. You also had to agree 
that you shared the principles of the UN Charter when you signed. How hypocritical. Shunning practices. Not only is this yet another unbiblical practice. Incidentally, it was condemned by Joseph Rutherford as a pagan practice when he denounced the Catholic Church for their practice of excommunication. But it is also a violation of human rights. Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, adopted incidentally by the United Nations in 1948, states that everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. This right includes freedom to change one's religion or belief. Article 20 says, no one may be compelled to belong to an association. No one may be compelled. The Jehovah's Witness organization does not respect these basic human liberties. They coerce their members to remain within the organization by imposing a nearly unbearable cost for leaving. The penalty for leaving is enforced systematic shunning by family and former friends. This shunning practice has detrimental effects on relationships, especially family relationships. It literally tears families apart, and the effect of shunning can be devastating on the individual who has been shunned, leading some to even end their lives by committing suicide. The threat of losing your family relationships causes many to stay in the organization despite their intense desire to leave. The cost of leaving is so detrimental that it is obvious that Jehovah's Witnesses do not have freedom of religion, thus being in direct violation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And finally, the rampant pedophilia within the organization. This is a problem throughout the world in many religions and organizations, however, you have set up policies and procedures through your two witness rule that have protected pedophiles and it has created a perfect haven for them. The two witness rule is also unscriptural as there was a, was a law protecting a victim of rape if she was raped outside the city when no one could hear her cries for help. While it is true that you now report in states that have mandatory reporting laws this should have been your policy from the beginning. It is so inconceivable to us that you still consider these acts as sins rather than crimes. And even if you disfellowship the predator, what was to prevent them from preying upon non-witness children now that they have lost their social network by being shunned by the congregation? The elders are not equipped to handle these crimes against children. However, the police are equipped to investigate all allegations of child abuse. Yet, you have done your utmost to protect the organization so as to avoid bringing reproach upon Jehovah's name rather than protect the innocent victims. And that is truly shameful. So in conclusion, this is to inform the Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses that we are no longer members of the Jehovah's Witness organization. We are disassociating ourselves from the organization and we request that our publisher cards be removed and destroyed. We also request that our names be removed from any type of membership cards or internal records from headquarters and the local congregation. Yeah. So, the reason we wanted to do this via a video, as opposed to just sending a letter, um, is that we've heard too many stories of people being maligned um, at the congregation when they left, um, allegations of things that were not true, mm -hmm. um, and in some cases, uh, there was a case of a young girl who had just watched a video. She had requested a letter that she had written to the elders. She had requested it back because she wanted to see a copy of it and they would not allow her to see it. Mm -hmm. So this is a record 
for us, for ourselves, for the world. Mm -hmm. um, this is now a permanent record. Mm -hmm. And I would actually encourage anyone out there who's watching this, if you feel like you want to take that step and disassociate yourself, make a video. Because this is the way that you can provide a true record of who you are, what you thought about the situation, what your beliefs were, mm -hmm. and no one can take that away from you. There's a permanent record of it. No one can deny it. No one can say, you didn't say these things, you didn't believe these things, you didn't stand up for yourself. Um, no one can take it away. And the Jehovah's Witnesses are notorious for burying evidence, hiding things. And I think that now that there's, we're in this place in the world where we're at, where everything is so easy to document, that you owe it to yourself to be able to protect yourself and stand up for yourselves by documenting what you say and that way no one can question you. No one can question your motives. Right, and we also felt like, you know, the organization has really done a bang up job over the past century of hushing people up and burying evidence and now in the 21st century, not possible. Mm -hmm. So, um, we, this is a officially our disassociation video and we're going to hashtag it disassociation video and if any of you decide to do the same thing add a hashtag so that we can be notified too because we would like to see those as well it really provides we i can't tell you how many stories we've heard about people who have written a letter to the brothers and they maybe sit there while the brothers read it. The brothers do not read the whole letter. No. They do not care what you have to say. They are not interested in your reasons for leaving. They only want to know that you either do or do not wish to remain a part of that organization. Um, and so, so many times you could feel as if your voice just wasn't heard, mm -hmm. but this could prevent that. People yeah. hear you. This, this is our taking our power back and um, we did not commit a wrongdoing that would be worthy of being disfellowship. All we've done is speak out against wrongdoing that we've seen, lies that we've seen within the organization. And because of that, our families are shunning us. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we just also want to say that we are not closing the door on our relationships with our family or any of our friends who may still be Jehovah's yep. Witnesses. We love you guys so much, and we are always here. We, we are never going to turn our backs on you if you nope. come to us, um, because you know that's, that's not loving. That's not yeah. what love does. This is not our idea to stop talking to people. It's, uh, yeah. it's their idea. Yeah, exactly. So that's basically it. Um, we thought it was important to share that with everyone. Um, you know, this whole process is fairly new to us of being shunned. I know many, many of you have been enduring this for years and years and decades. And trust me, we feel for you. Mm -hmm. You know, we really, really sympathize with you. And it's not easy. And, you know, we have our own community of people that we're meeting on YouTube. And, you know, it's just a lot of changes going on for us. But we felt that this was very important to share with you. And uh, take your power back. You don't have to meet with anybody you don't want to meet with. Don't have to talk to anybody you don't want to talk to. Don't have to talk about anything you don't want to talk about. Respect yourself. Stand up for your own rights as a human being first. Yeah. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thanks everybody.